Assalamu alaikum. I greet you with a very heavy heart after witnessing the tragedy that unfolded yesterday in New Zealand. I was thinking of words that I could use to describe it after seeing the footage of the massacre taking place and of people's reactions to it. But I honestly cannot find words to do justice. I mean, yes, I can say it was repulsive, it was disgusting, vile, inhumane. But I don't think these words are strong enough. So I'm sure you guys have been following the story. Just in a nutshell, a extremist far-right individual drove to a masjid, a mosque in New Zealand just before Friday prayers and in cold blood gunned down 49 people and injuring another 48. He recorded his uh, killing spree on a GoPro and streamed it on Facebook. He had a manifesto or a document in which he attempted to justify what he did. Normally what happens is when a person that's of Caucasian background does something, they're regarded as, you know, a lone wolf or, you know, somebody who's crazy or whatever. But this guy planned it meticulously. He knew before prayers, not during prayers, because he's obviously going to get attacked. He had guns at the ready. He streamed. I don't think I can even call him a man. Or a human being, because a human being has remorse, mercy, compassion. This person had none of them. He went without hesitation. Honestly, uh, when I was watching it, it was like watching Call of Duty, but without the names hovering above the people. Just the seamless nature in, we, in, in which he was shooting the people. And what's worse is when he entered the mosque, he was greeted at the door by a Muslim who saw him and he said, Hello brother. He could see he was carrying a gun. Maybe he was trying to defuse the situation or maybe he gave him the benefit of the doubt. Immediately, no response. He was shot down. He killed children, men and of course women as well. There's another bit where he's leaving the mosque. He sees a woman crying for help. He shoots her mercilessly. He goes back to the car, reloads, goes back in the masjid and shoots the people that are already dead. So there's no chance of survival. Without a shadow of a doubt now, it's clear that this was planned. Even the music that he was playing when he was driving there, the insignia and the markings on his gun all had historical significances. Whether it's to do with uh, Bosnia, Serbia, Yugoslavia, whether it's to do with the Christian crusades against the Muslims, there was a clear political slash religious um, mind frame behind this. Now what was interesting was the New Zealand PM and the authorities said he wasn't on any watch list. But a lot of you guys won't know that New Zealand, alongside Australia, because the killer was Australian, with Canada, US, UK, they are all known as the Five Eyes and they share intelligence with each other. Now of course other European countries have been added. So my question is, despite having one of the world's most sophisticated intelligence, how can you not figure out that this guy is dodgy? I mean, let's look at the facts. Number one, Hours before he was about to carry out this heinous crime, he posted exactly what he was going to do. Why wasn't it picked up? Okay, maybe it was on a website that wasn't known. The website was flagged for many child abuse pictures. He's also admitted to being in contact with the Oslo mass murderer, Anders Breivik. When someone contacts a mass murderer who's known to do something similar, shouldn't that raise any flags?
the fact of the matter is, Islamophobia and far-right extremism is not taken seriously. But it's not only that, it's the media and the politicians which have created an atmosphere of fear and hate that has allowed far-right groups to flourish. We can blame people like Lauren Southern, Tommy Robinson, Milo, whoever, but the bottom line is these people have been given credence and clout by the media and the politicians. Now the people that have passed away, we pray that Allah elevates their ranks in paradise, gives their family peace and helps them during this rough ordeal. And we find solace in the fact that they died in a masjid, they were in a state of wudu, they were, it was on a day of Friday, the month of Rajab and of course these people are now you know in Jannah. There's no doubt about that. But now the question arises, what about us, the people that are here? What do we do? Muslim lives are not cheap that we can just say, you know what, whatever happens, happens. It's all about peace and this and that. And the politicians and the media can say whatever they want unhindered. I'm sorry, but that's just ludicrous. The fact is, Muslim immigration means more Islamic terrorism. I think Islam hates us. There's two points that we simply cannot ignore. Yeah, Number one is some people feel the need in the same breath as condemning these attacks to condemning Muslim attacks. As if they're trying to water down what's happened. No, how about we deal with this ordeal first and let's not try and water it down. And some have the nerve to say, you know what, there's two types of extremism and this and that. Okay. Okay, there's two types of extremism. First of all, you shouldn't be bringing it up when something like this has happened. But if you are to, let's look at the grievances. The grievances of Muslims. Yeah, What's the grievances of Muslims? Well, imperialism, institutional bigotry, an egotistical foreign policy designed to exploit resources, installing stooges as leaders that lead to many hundreds and thousands of people dying. Now let's look at the far right grievances. People coming stealing our jobs, supposedly overpopulating our countries. I'm struggling now. I'm struggling because if we are to be honest, Muslims don't have the biggest army. They don't have the biggest military expenditure. They don't have sophisticated intelligence gathering. They're not the biggest in arms dealing. They don't have a history of dropping nuclear weapons or even bombs that say the US or the UK have dropped. Now what makes this even more heartless is, yes, mashallah, people are coming out in solidarity and showing their support or whatnot. And these people should be promoted because it is very important. But the sad reality is a lot of people have been praising this attack online. And what makes it more despicable is even after the murderer appears in court, he's still smirking, he's still doing hand signs, there's absolutely no remorse on his face whatsoever. And you know what? I'm not surprised because for decades the Muslims have been dehumanized. They've been attacked so many times in so many different ways by politicians. Example of Boris Johnson calling niqabis as letterboxes and then later being acquitted. That oh, what he did was fine. That even now, after footage has emerged as to the cold-blooded, merciless nature of the killer, they're still painting him out to be this innocent blonde-haired child who grew up and who didn't know. Tell me what is going on? How can we then still blame the far right? The far right are not the problem. It's the politicians and the media who have created the atmosphere for them to thrive. Let's get this into our heads, please. Yeah. But what's the takeaway from this? Yeah. The takeaway from this is we're living in very testing times, and it's important that we teach our children about politics, about history, 
and about media manipulation. Number two, learn self-defense. Teach it to your wife, teach it to your children, because let's face it, when these attacks happen, they happen to the defenseless. And number three, it is very important that you learn and practice your religion now. The world, the earth is crying out for Islam, but sadly the Muslims are too busy being distracted by the glitter and the glamour. So it's very important guys that we look into our faith and we show people Islam. And we don't let attacks like this get us down because if you look at our tradition, Muslims don't fear death. For if we die in the path of Allah, we are martyrs. And these people died in the path of Allah. They went to pray on the blessed day. We will continue going to our mosques. We will continue praying. We will continue preaching Islam. You have not stopped us. Until next time guys. Assalamu alaikum.